Hello guys and welcome back. This is part 3 of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start with part 3 of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. Let's continue with more semi-quantitative parameters for the assessment of aortic regurgitation. The next semi-quantitative parameter is the pressure half time or PHT. Pressure half time is assessed using continuous wave Doppler and represents the time taken for aortic left ventricular pressure difference to fall to half its initial value. The more severe the aortic regurgitation, the faster the equalization of pressure, the steeper the aortic regurgitation deceleration slope and the shorter the pressure half time. An accurate assessment of pressure half time requires a complete continuous wave envelope. A poorly aligned Doppler cursor, eccentric jets and multiple jets will impact on the accuracy of this measurement. Another important limitation is that when the left ventricular diastolic filling pressure is increased, the pressure difference between the aorta and left ventricle is reduced, resulting in a short pressure half time even in the absence of severe aortic regurgitation. Other important hemodynamic factors which may influence pressure half time include stroke volume, compliance of the aorta and left ventricular performance. Now, what are the key points when using pressure half time to assess aortic regurgitation? First, pressure half time represents the time taken for the aortic left ventricular pressure difference to fall to half its initial value. Now, a pressure half time of less than 200 milliseconds is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation and a pressure half time of more than 500 milliseconds is consistent with mild or less aortic regurgitation. And left ventricular compliance, left ventricular dysfunction and hypertensive therapies may all affect the accuracy of the calculated pressure half time. Pressure half time is the last semi-quantitative parameters. Now let's start with the quantitative parameters used to assess aortic regurgitation in echocardiography. The first quantitative parameter is the effective regurgitant orifice area. The effective regurgitant orifice area is a direct estimation of the size of the regurgitant orifice. There are two methods by which the effective regurgitant orifice area can be assessed. The first is a more direct technique using the proximal isovelocitive surface area method which should be considered the default approach. The second indirect method is the regurgitant volume and is subject to greater error. However, there are several limitations with this technique. First, in the context of multiple aortic regurgitation jets, the largest jet should be identified and used for assessment, although this will likely underestimate overall severity. Second, 
With eccentric jets, small errors in radius measurements are multiplied and may result in large inaccuracies in the calculation of effective regurgitant orifice area. And third, the presence of calcification and a non-circular regurgitant orifice commonly seen in bicuspid aortic valves with a hemi-elliptic pisa will all impact accuracy. Now, what are the key points when measuring the effective regurgitant orifice area? An effective regurgitant orifice area of more than 0.3 cm2 is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation. And an accurate calculation of the effective regurgitant orifice area using the PISA method is limited in the setting of multiple and eccentric jets. The next quantitative parameter used in the assessment of aortic regurgitation is the regurgitant volume. Regurgitant volume is a useful quantitative parameter providing prognostic information in aortic regurgitation. There are two ways to estimate the regurgitant volume. The PISA method is the preferred approach, whereas the continuity method is more challenging and subject to greater error. However, both techniques require a high degree of skill and excellent image quality and therefore an accurate assessment may not be possible. The British Society of Echocardiography Guidelines recommends calculation of regurgitant volume using the PISA methodology where an accurate measurement of the PISA radius and regurgitant jet VTI can be obtained. A regurgitant volume of less than 30 milliliters is consistent with mild aortic regurgitation and a regurgitant volume of more than 60 milliliters is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation. The next quantitative parameter for the assessment of aortic regurgitation is the regurgitant fraction. Regurgitant fraction is the ratio of the regurgitant volume to the forward stroke volume expressed as a percentage. There is some evidence that regurgitant fraction is a useful assessment of aortic regurgitation severity in the context of impaired left ventricular systolic function or reduced cardiac output. Now, what are the key points when measuring the regurgitant fraction? Regurgitant fraction is the proportion of regurgitant volume compared to the forward stroke volume expressed as a percentage. A regurgitant fraction of less than 30% is consistent with mild aortic regurgitation and a regurgitant fraction of more than 50% is consistent with severe aortic regurgitation. Now, we have been talking on how to assess chronic aortic regurgitation. Now I'm going to show you some additional key parameters in the assessment of chronic aortic regurgitation. The first additional parameter is the left ventricular size and function. Severe chronic aortic regurgitation is almost always associated with left ventricular dilatation. All patients should have an assessment of both indexed left ventricular volumes and indexed left ventricular linear dimensions. The next additional parameter is the global longitudinal strain. Global longitudinal strain may enable the identification of early left ventricular dysfunction. 
and the last additional parameter is the aortic dimensions. All patients should have a comprehensive assessment of the aorta, including indexed aortic dimensions. That's all for this video. Make sure to watch part 3 of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Bye!